So today I wanted to do um, a ranking video of a band that's pretty important to me. Um, they've been with me pretty much all the way through my childhood. And, well, I even still listen to them to this day. Not quite as much. Um, I guess you just move on from music that you grow up with. Um, but that band is U2. So to start things off, we're going to go with the latest album, uh, Songs of Surrender. Um, it's one that I don't own and I don't plan on buying it. I didn't think it was very good at all. Um, way too long. Wasn't a fan of it. Um, the stripped down nature of all the songs just didn't really fit with me. Um, and I don't think that Bono's vocal performance was particularly great either. Um, I've seen Bono sing live recently and I know that he can do better than that. Um, and it's also like the 40 songs, I mean, it's never going to be an album that you're going to sit and listen to uh, in one sitting anyway. So that is number 15. Number 14 is one that splits opinion and that is U2's Pop. Um, I just don't like this album. I've listened to it a few times, even in one of my previous videos. I specifically chose this album for one of um, uh, Canadian Stud Muffins contests. Uh, I like Discotech, uh, Do You Feel Loved, and Please. Uh, but I think that's basically it. Uh, it's, it's a really slow, sluggish experience and I am just, it's just not one for me really if I'm being completely honest um, and the least said about, the less said about it the better. Next is another one that I don't own, uh, Songs of Experience. Uh, it's, um, I don't hate it but I don't love it, I don't like it really, It's there's some songs on it that I do enjoy um, but the vast majority of the album is just, uh, again, not my particular taste. Uh, particular songs that I do like are probably um, Love is Bigger Than Anything In Its Way. 13 is one of my favourites as well. Um, yeah, Songs of Experience. Doubt I'll pick it up, but who knows, if I find it on... Uh, the cheap somewhere, then I may pick it up eventually. Um, <clears throat> next up is All That You Can't Leave Behind. And my main problem with this album is actually that it's, v it's got one of the best side A's you'll probably find on an album. But it's uh, it's too front heavy. Um, it's like a, it's like a crane that can't stand, I don't know, do you know what this album is? This is a guy that doesn't do leg day. This is a guy, he, he's, he's a tank when it comes to shoulders and arms, but it, there, there's, there's nothing on his wee skinny legs. That's what this album is. After it gets to in a little while, there's only one song on here that I actually like listening to, and that's when I look at the world. Um, but the first half is excellent. The first half is absolutely stunning. Number 11 is How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. Um, this is this sort of spoiled itself by sitting there uh, with the sleeve. I probably should have took the case out um, and placed it like that. But um, yeah, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. I have had a sort of love-hate relationship with this over the years. I went through a phase when I was about 14, 15 where I was listening to this quite a lot. Um, Vertigo was on this. Medical drugs, sometimes you can't make it on your own. Um, City of Blinding Lights. Uh, I did quite like a lot of the songs that are on here. I mean, I'd still say this is like a good 7 out of 10. But um, I think some of the songs are just a bit sort of uninspired towards the end. I just don't really like them very much. Um, mainly thinking about Yowie and Fast Cars. Um, but most of the songs up until that point, I do tend to enjoy at least uh, in some capacity so being in 11th out of all the albums available is not really too bad of a standing in the grand scheme of things number 12 
Next up is Zuropa. Zuropa is an interesting one. So I think a lot of people would maybe think that the reason pop doesn't stick with me is because of this sort of more electronic dance sort of vibe that it has going for it at times. Um, but I feel like Zuropa was sort of the precursor to that, but I think it just does it a lot better. Um, it's also got a lot of sort of ambient, uh, a lot of ambience to it in, in ways, particularly the title track. Um, Babyface uh, is a decent song. Numb has one of the weirdest music videos ever. So does Lemon, actually. Lemon's a bit of a strange one, but it's a fantastic song. Um, and, of course, one of the fan favourites on here, Stay. Uh, one of my favourites that tends to go under the radar, though, personally, is The First Time, track 8. Um, it's a really slow track, but um, it's one that I really enjoy listening to. Um, it's quite a sad one as well. This will surprise people, I think. Next up is Songs of Innocence. Um, I must have been the only person in my entire school um, who liked this album uh, and was happy to receive it for free. Everybody else was... No, I mean, nobody else knew who you 2 were. Um, and then they went from not knowing who you 2 were to hating them for giving them free music. Personally, I was over the moon. Um... Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it, so it got a lot of legwork out of me. Don't know if you can really see the track list in there. Um, this is a different... It's a different style of a case, but... Well, it's different from the dual cases, at least. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of most of the songs on here. The ones I don't necessarily love too much are probably the Volcano. Um... And maybe this is where you can reach me now. I really like uh, Cedarwood Road, Iris, Every Breaking Wave, uh, and The Troubles. Um, but yeah, I think this is a massively over-hated album. And I feel like all the reasons for that are nothing to do with the actual music itself. Uh, okay. So, Rattle and Hum. I don't know why I instantly turned that round. Rattle and Hum. Um... So, sort of half live, half um, half studio. I feel like it could have been better executed. I'm not a fan of most of the live stuff on here. Uh, I would have been happy without most of it. Uh, apart from Van Diemen's Land, I really, I really love Van Diemen's Land. Um, I just... It maybe should have been separated into two discs or something. Instead of being um, sort of randomly mixed up. I think that's a big problem with this album because it'll be like live sections and then it goes into well, it's the first song it goes into is uh, the first studio song it goes into is Desire and it's just a bit sort of awkward um, and there are songs on here that I do really enjoy um, that being the vast majority of them uh, the studio ones um, it's just the awkward uh, sort of split and the way that they're sequenced so the top seven and i should mention that one very important album is missing from this um but we'll get to that when we come to it um so number seven again i think this might be a bit of a surprise for most people but it's no line on the horizon um this is probably the first album that i was truly aware of coming out by you to but anything before this would have been I would have been too young um because I was 10 when this album came out and that was when I was actually conscious of it like coming up um but again there's loads of great songs on here um Knowing the Horizon Itself Magnificent uh, Moment of Surrender I, I'm a big fan of Fez being born and Cedars of Lebanon as well um Cedars of Lebanon I recently found out is actually a it's sampled from a Brian Eno song. I don't remember what the track is, but I'll I'll try and put a note in if I find it again. Um but yeah anybody who's a fan of Brian Eno um might want to check that out. 
if they don't know about that already. Most people probably do, but it was news to me a couple uh, a couple years ago when I found out about it. Um, and I found it by accident as well. Next up is October. Now this is actually one of the last albums that I ended up listening to. Um, for whatever reason, I just sort of skipped over it. I quit like that the, uh, the track listing is on the front here as well. Um, but for whatever reason, growing up, I skipped October. Um, and this is seen as like probably one of their weakest efforts generally among fans of YouTube. But for me, it's still a good album. Um, but I'm very partial to post punk, so I could be having my biases there in terms of genre. But we've got great songs again. Um, tomorrow, uh, October. Stranger in a Strange Land is one that I really like. Um, and Rejoice, a lot of energy, um, I think, was put into this album. And to think that he lost his lyrics as well, and then he had to, you know, probably write most of these in an even tighter um, time scale as well. Uh, must have made the production of this album very stressful for Bono in particular. Number five is one that my brother's got a hold of at the moment, but it's the Joshua Tree. Now, for most people, I can hear everyone gasping um, and, I don't know, holding their pitchforks and their shotguns at my face. Uh, the Joshua Tree is one that I utterly adore. Everything from here on out, I do utterly adore. And, well, even some of the ones that have gone by, I also adore. Um but uh, the Joshua Tree, I listened to that so much that I made myself a bit sick of it. But uh, it still has to be said that it is um, probably um, their magnum opus. Um, it could be argued that The Unforgettable Fire could be in there as well, uh, or Act Tongue Baby, considering it was, after, it was just after The Unforgettable Fire, where they went to Live Aid, and then that was what shot them into stardom. But... Yeah, Joshua Tree, I think the Joshua Tree speaks for itself among you two fans, so I'm not going to go into it too much. Um, we'll go into what is next. And what is next is Actum Baby. Um, this is uh, this is fantastic. This is utterly brilliant. And I can understand why it's a lot of people's favourite album. Uh, it's not for me, but... I mean, it's got a great track list, and this is the, again, it's, it's like a it's like a mini uh, it's like a mini LP. Uh, but there's not a single bad song on this really. I think the weakest or my least favorite, at least, would be Acrobat. I've just never taken to that song in particular, but um, every other song is fantastic. I think. If I was to point anybody in the direction of you two and tell them to listen to any album, it would be this or Joshua Tree. Even though I have my other favourites, um, I think these are the ones that are the go-tos um, in this discography. Next up is Boy. Now, like I said earlier, I'm a huge fan of the post-punk era of you two. So, hence why Boy is so high up in the list. I've listened to this so, so many times. Um, and I, it's, it's um, I think it's a big childhood thing. This is one of the early albums that I would have heard um, by the band around about the same time as I would have heard, like, uh, How Does the Mantle and Atomic Bomb and All That You Can't Leave Behind. And then not long after that would have been knowing the horizon. I would I was grown up on um Boy as well and uh some bits and pieces of the other ones. mainly the hits though. So I would have known I will follow. Um and Twilight as well, I think. Uh but over the over the years I've grown to appreciate every single album on this. There's not a single song uh, every single song, sorry. Um there's not a single one that I skip. Uh, and Cat Dub and Into the Heart is such a great uh, two piece for me, um, back to back. Um, a Day Without Me is excellent. The Ocean, 
it, although it's not completely ambient, it's, uh, it's a much softer track that I've got a lot of appreciation for. And so, uh, it gets a, it, it just gets a lot of appreciation for me when I'm listening to this album. Um, so yeah, that's Boy. So now there's only two albums left. And number two is The Unforgettable Fire. The Unforgettable Fire is when Brian Eno decided to have his uh, stamp of authority over you two at this point. Um, and although I'm not a big fan of 4th of July uh, on this album, some of the songs on here, I mean, you've got Pride, um, Wire, the title track, even Promenade um, and Elvis Presley in America. Uh, so I believe there are a couple of tracks that most people don't really love, but I'm 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 still a big fan of those tracks, and of course it has bad, which is possibly my favorite song of all time. Uh, depends when you ask me, really. For the case of, if, for the point of this video, we'll say it is. Um, it allows me to overlook Fourth of July. Um. And. Yeah, it's it's. One of my favorite albums of all time. And then, to final things out, we have War. War was my favourite album of all time for a very long time. Um, it's still probably top five. But again, I have a lot of nostalgia for this album. Um, There's another one where, uh, I think listening to it in full growing up, uh, it was one that really grabbed me. And... For that reason, it's stuck with me ever since. Um, songs like Sunday Bloody Sunday, obviously. New Year's Day, I've had a bit of a ritual where I sort of listen to that every single New Year's Day. is usually the first song that I listen to every single year now, um, deliberately. Again, though, the same as Act Hung Baby. There's, well, the same as Act Hung Baby and Boy, actually. There's no skips. Um, there's... Uh, it's, it's just all killer, no filler, as the saying goes. Um, I think a lot of people would probably argue that The Refugee or Red Light would maybe be filler, but I, I enjoy both of those perfectly fine. Um, but most of this album are among my favourite in the entire U2 discography. So for me, it's it just sort of naturally fits on top of the uh, the ranking. So there you have it. The um the YouTube ranking. I hope you've enjoyed this video and also want to say uh, a quick thanks for 50 subs as I wasn't really expecting to hit that. Um as soon as I did. That is. Um so I just want to thank everybody that subscribed um from watching the previous video. Um and hopefully you'll stick around and and I hope you've enjoyed this video as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.